All right, so the insides of this is, is taken care of. Now, um, that's the gear section. Now we've got to pop this off. And now we're on to a quick cleaning. This is actually, you always do the quick cleaning too. Um, this is something that you do, you should do every single time you go fishing. So, I don't know if you can see that, but I've got, look at all that salt that's in there. Right here, I've got some salt buildup and corrosion, so I really need to clean this out. And I've, I've done this many times with this reel, but literally just once in the salt water and this is what happened. So, you've got this track, the brass part here, okay, right? And that's what these brakes ride on, okay? so. We're definitely going to clean that track system. Hard for you to see, but you want to race the Q-tip around that track system. Clean that off. Okay, and there is dirt on there. And what I do is I add a little oil. Okay, on the Q-tip, and I just. Run that around again a couple times, clean that up, okay, and then I take a dry part, run it around also, get the excess oil off, okay. Really all I'm doing with the oil is making it clean, I'm not necessarily trying to put oil, okay, so I'm going to turn it back around, take the oil, and clean any of the grime off of, let's see, it's hard to off of this part right here, okay? Because that was really salty. So that's clean. Now you've got this part right there, okay? Take the oiled, run it around the outside here, clean it best you can. You can see that came out kind of grimy. Take the the dry section, clean, dry Q-tip, and run it around that way. And then you've got that right there. Take the whole Q-tip and stick it right in, and just twist. That's actually going to twist the handle, so you want to hold the handle with your other finger, like so, and just twist it around there and clean that out in there. Okay? Let's see, kind of got a little a little grimy. Now, what I like to do is pull off much of the fibers, the cotton off the end of your Q-tip, like so. And actually, I need a little more off because we are going to, you've got this shaft that runs in. So you need to make sure this Q-tip is the same diameter because there's so fine tolerances. And then you just take it and there's a hole right there. See that hole back there? And you stick it right through that hole like so and twist. And the Q-tip goes all the way in like that. Twist it and then pull it out. Do that a couple times and you're going to find a lot of, a lot of grime comes out of there. Now you've got that ball bearing there, okay? There's a little wire that holds that ball bearing in. Now this is really tricky, okay? You want to take a small, fine little screwdriver. But be very careful because these tend to snap. So you want to put your finger over top of it like this to keep it from snapping. And then you pull this out. See, even with my finger there, that snapped out, and that's it. Really small, really fine, almost impossible to see on your carpet. Okay? Take your screwdriver, put in the hole of the of your ball bearing, and pull out the ball bearing. Now you've got 
on the back end of here, there's like a little uh, drag washer. I'm going to pop that out, okay? There's a lot of oil back there, so you want to clean that out quite a bit, okay? Get all the grime out of there. Keep on doing it until your Q-tip comes out without any dirt. Clean off that drag washer. Stick, put a little dot underneath. There's like a little recess where that drag washer sits. Put the drag washer in. And make sure it nests right in that recess. There we go. And I put a little dot of oil right on top of the drag washer. Okay, and that'll stay in there. And clean out your ball bearing. Just wipe it between your fingers. Okay. You don't need oil on the ball bearing um, unless they're crazy dried out. Um, but that's rare. I never ever put oil on there because then once you do, you're bringing grime into it. So then you pop that in, take this little wire, and you stick it right on top. You stick one end underneath, there's like a little uh, ledge there. See, it's underneath that. And then with your fingernail, push the other side in and pop that in. So now it's back in. And that holds the oops, holds that in. Okay? Now, you can take your pulled off, you can do the same thing. So pull off a whole bunch on another side or another Q tip. You want to clean the inside of that ball bearing. You just push it in, push it, and pull it out. Boy, that came out dirty. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a lot of dirt in there. So that's good, we did that. Next, you can take your, you really want to maybe wash your fingers, keep, get all the grease off of it. You don't want any grease on your fingers, nothing. You've been touching grease, you've been touching oil, you don't want anything. I'm gonna take a brand new Q-tip and now we're going to start cleaning this. So you've got this metal post here. You want to clean that off. Sure enough, some grime and dirt came off. Okay. In fact, because so much did, I'm actually going to take some oil. I'm going to put that on my end of my Q-tip just a little bit, and then I'm going to use that to clean. Okay. Then I'm going to go back to the dry section, wipe all that off. And that did clean a little more. I'm going to take now, because it seems like it's clean, the inside of these is what rests on the, the track, what I was saying before. So these bend in like that. These bend in like that. And when there's centrifugal force, these push out like that, which ends up putting pressure on the inside. So this is where it's resting. So you want to wipe off the inside of each one of those, okay? I did it with the, the oiled section, so if you do that, which help clean it, then you want to take a dry section and wipe it off. All right, so that part's done. Now, if you ever see a lot of grime anywhere else, you want to wipe that off, but this is pretty clean. So now I'm taking the oiled section again. I'm running it around the inside lip. Oof. There we go, like this. Okay. Take the dry section, dry it off. And then you're gonna to to flip it over. We've got this shaft, okay? You can use paper towel, um, but I'm just using the oiled part of my Q-tip, okay? And then clean in here. And around this part here. Dry it all off. 
now you've got then the edges. This is the trickiest part because now you are, if you touch it, you're putting oil back on it. No matter how well you clean your hands, you're going to have oil on them. So you want to go around, go around, and I'm not using any oil. I'm not using the oiled section this time. This is just, I'm just going around that edge, okay? Now don't touch. You're touching just the spool, and this is why tape around the spool really helps, because if that string was going every which way, you'd have a lot of trouble. Now that we have everything else cleaned, if you've got any fibers from the, from the Q-tip, you want to get those off. Then we just put the spool right back in. That long section, long shaft section, goes right in the hole of, you know, right there. Wiggle it in, it drops right into place. And this is where having that tape really helps because if you don't tape up that spool, you're going to have the line going every which way and then it's not going to drop in perfectly. And you're going to have to try to mess with it. It's just a pain. It's just so much easier to tape it up. That really helps. And just push your... Oh. oh. All right, so I add that in too much. Push them back. There we go. And that pops it in. So see how this wiggles back and forth? I tend to like to, this is how I always fish it. That's still wiggling. All right, barely wiggling back and forth. Now you'll be able to see, when I spin this, it's going to just keep on going because I, you know, we cleaned the reel. Plus I got the casting brakes on there. Let's go ahead and pop those casting brakes off. We'll see. All right. Now you'll see this really move. Remember we talked earlier about the, the drag and the pressure versus smoothness, okay? And you might want to actually put your finger down on the spool, let it move around, get some of that grease around, but you grind that all the way down and oh man, I can barely turn it. So it's just enough to give you a lot of pressure, but that is really smooth. I mean, there's, there is no, you know, but that's very, very tight drag. These, these uh, Corrados are awesome. If you haven't fished one of these, pick one up. I mean, for the money, I want to say they're like 160 bucks or something like that. They're not that bad. Um, might be less than that. I think I, I got this one on sale uh, for like 125 I mean, I, I don't know a reel out there this quality for that price. This is an awesome reel. Um, I have a CI4 Plus which is the Chronarch CR4 Plus. I think that's like a $250 reel, maybe 219 or something like that. About the same size, that's a 100 size, I think, this is 150, so it's a little bigger. Um, and that's supposed to be like a saltwater reel. Um, but I take that out in saltwater and this one, and that one tends to, uh, at least this last trip, that one gummed up a lot sooner. I mean, it, even when I brought it home, this thing was, uh, Still not that bad. Worked really well. There was a little bit of, uh, towards the end, some grime got into one of the ball bearings. Um, it made a kind of a whiz when I when I casted it. But it still worked properly. Um, drag was great. Um, the gears were great. Everything was fine. Um, but I had some trouble with, like, the gears were doing this with my CI4 Plus. It was kind of making a lot of noise, um, there was something wrong with it. One of my favorites, and I'm a big fan of Shimano. Conventional, not fly fishing, but conventional stuff. Shimano is the way to go, man. That's just, in my opinion, I really like it. A lot of guys 
or Abu guys or pen guys or whatever it may be and that's fine you know um, they're all good stuff that's how you clean out Shimano reel it generally works for a lot of them I think Abu Garcia is pretty similar internally um, a lot of it um, is the same there might be small differences at least things might look different um, different colors different uh, shapes whatever but they're they're all the same components um, but pretty much that's how you take apart a reel and clean it fully uh, so there you go hope you guys enjoyed um, please uh, comment below and uh, Tell me what you think or if you have any questions. All right, see you on the next video, guys. Go catch some fish. All right, if you want to see how much grime comes out of these, look at all this. You know, look at all, all this, the having to wipe down. These things get grimy. So it's really good to do this, at least once a year. Um, this is when you're putting the, the reel back in your in your case, and you're gonna, you know, you don't need to do this every day if you're a freshwater fisherman. Um, when I worked, or when I fished a lot in Corpus, when I lived down there, um, every two or three trips I'd, I'd have to pull it apart because it is so salty. The water is the most salty of any fishery I've ever fished. Um, but, you know, normal conditions, fresh water, uh, light salt, um, maybe Pacific coast, um, even Atlantic coast, um, just not the Gulf. The Gulf is so salty. But most of those, you can just do it once a year, maybe twice a year. Um, this full cleaning um, had to be do done quite a bit when I lived in Corpus. And I, uh, you know, I just came accustomed to it, and it was something that I, you know, it's been a while, so it took me a little longer. So sorry about the length of the video, guys. But... There you go. Um, <laughs> all that grime came out of that, that reel. So now we got it working and this is ready. To